In this video, we are going to see input output processor in digital fundamentals and architectures. In this lecture, we'll cover introduction of input output processor and communication channel between CPU and IOB. So first we have to know what is input output processor. So let's see. The input output processor is one of the processor or we called as an IO channels. So when it will act activate, the CPU will never interact between the input output devices and memory okay that means the dma mode will be activated that means direct memory access so the dma operation means the input output devices will directly access the memory without any cpu interactions that means the cpu will give instruction to the input output processor what kind of process we are that processor should do those instructions will be provided by the CPU and the input output processor will handle the some kind of peripheral devices uh, and the memory the while tra data transfer so that means the concept of DMA operations can be extended to relieve the CPU further from getting involved with the execution of IO operations this gives the rise to development of special purpose processor called input output processor or IO channels. So let's see. The input output processor is just like in a CPU that handles the details IO operations. Already I told you that the IO operations are handled by the IOP because the CPU never to be intact. The CPU will give an instruction to the IOP, right? So the IOP can fetch and execute its own instructions that are specifically designed and characterized IO transformations. So for that, CPU gives some instructions and also IOP having the that their own instructions. So uh, that instructions will help data transfer between IO devices and memory. It can perform other processing tasks like arithmetic, logic, branching, and code translation. So these kind of uh, operations are will be performed by the IOP. The main memory unit takes the pivotal role. That means the pivotal role means the main memory never to be changed by their role. Okay, let's see the diagram of it. So this is the block diagram of IO processor, IOP processor. So the, this is a memory unit. It's never uh, it's never to be changed here. Uh, the memory unit will interact with peripheral devices through central processing unit or input output processor. Because uh, when when the input output processor will access means the DMA mode will be activated. Once the DMA mode will be activated for this these peripheral devices, the IOP will handle these peripheral devices uh, to the memory unit okay and the cpu will the cpu will uh, checking other devices uh, though those other devices are not activated the dma mode so that the central processing unit uh, activate other peripheral devices so here we seen memory buses and io buses so this is the block diagram of iop processor so let's see one by one so, so here we given the memory unit occupies the central position and can communicate with each processor. So the memory unit will occupy the central position. Okay. So through the communicate with central processing unit and uh, input output processor through the memory bus. And the CPU process the data required for solving the computational task. That means the CPU will give an instructions to the input output processor for these peripheral devices that will uh, that will that will instructions are accessed by the IOP the CPU give instructions and leave it leave those peripheral devices and IOP provides path for transfer of data between the peripheral and memory once DMA mode is activated the path will be activated through the uh, input output processor for these peripheral devices communicate with the memory unit next one the IOP operates independent from CPU and transfer data between peripheral and memory so through this path the IOP will help to pass the data from the peripheral devices and memory 
the input output processor is totally independent from the cpu because the cpu never to be interact while the dma mode is on so through the input output processor the peripheral devices will transfer the data to the memory unit as like that memory unit will be transfer the data to the peripheral devices the communication between the peripheral devices and input output processor is called the program control method and the whole process uh, communication between peripheral devices and memory unit through the input output processor is called the direct memory access method next topic is communication channel between cpu and iop this channel explains the commands executed by the iop and cpu while performing some programs that means while iop is performing the cpu will be initiating the task to the iop and uh, there will be a channel will activate us for those iop and cpu or communication okay so the cpu do not executes the instruction but it assigns the task of initiating the operations the instructions are executed by the iop so the instructions will be provided to the iop okay those instructions are executed by the input output processor these are initiating by the central processing unit the i o transfer is instructed by the cpu the iop ask for the cpu through interrupt this channel starts by the cpu by giving test iop path instruction to the iop and then the communication begins so once iop request to the cpu to enable the communication channel and for the transfer the data to the memory so next the cpu will given a test path first will given a test path for data transferring once the data transfer is successfully transfer means it will enable the original path for the iop process so this diagram illustrate the communication channel between the cpu and the iop iop so uh, already i told you that the iop request to the cpu and then the cpu will send the instruction to the test iop path to the input output processor next input output processor will transfer the word to the memory location for test condition once the status is okay means the cpu will enable the original path to transfer the data to the memory to access the memory for the iop program once it will uh, input out process gate means it will access the memory location and contact io transfers using dma so through the dma mode the io transfers are doing so after that once the process are done means the report will be generated by the input output processor once it it all completed means again the input output processor will interrupt to the cpu for the next process so next process as like that the cpu will establish the test connection and once that test connection will be okay means it will be enable the original path for the iop until the the process all the process are completed so while these uh, input output transfer transfer in dma mode the cpu will access other devices for the other process so this is the communication between cpu and iop iop so here how the iop and cpu are sharing the instruction between each other so this is input output processor in digital fundamentals and architectures thank you for watching